Well, after the whiplash of the three devlogs I made earlier this year, in which I announced I was working on a game, paid for a Steam credit for it, I then got into a misunderstanding with the day job about whether I could even publish it or not, before giving up on the whole thing, I'm finally back with a new project. And if you're not sure what I mean, I started working on a project which I was calling Beneath the Bows. It was a uh, little sort of simulation game about a lot of spirits that had to go to a spa to kind of relax before moving on to the afterlife. And yeah, I did some videos announcing I was working on it and then I paid the hundred dollars or whatever it was to Steam to try and get it published on Steam. It then occurred to me that I should probably check my contract for my day job because I work in the games industry kind of outside of what I'm doing here. And this is pretty standard on a lot of contracts in the game dev world. There are like moonlighting clauses and anti-compete clauses. And yeah, that was in my contract. So I got in touch with my boss and just asked whether I could work on it. And it was a very busy time when I asked and he just flat out said no. But after a bit of back and forth, I got permission to be able to work on a game and publish it on Steam, but just with some caveats, uh, which I won't go into here. Uh, but just little things about the way I can and cannot market the game. But that whole experience of, you know, causing the issues at work and then kind of ha not working on the game while I was waiting for these issues to be resolved, it just really took the wind out of my sails. And towards the end of 2023, I was feeling a bit burnt out anyway. I'd been doing kind of game dev stuff for the whole year. Um, and nothing was kind of really sticking and I wasn't that excited about Beneath the Bows. I just thought it'd be a good project to kind of get over the finish line. But then I just eventually decided to stop working on that project. Uh, I hadn't opened the project in a while and I just had no interest to go back to it. Uh, kind of uh, burn all bridges with that game. Just with that specific project, I really like the game idea and I do want to kind of work on it. Um, I think it'd be a really good 2D game. Uh, 3D just added a whole like a lot of complexity to it that we didn't need and in hindsight I probably wouldn't have finished it anyway. But now that I had a Steam credit and permission to release something I went back to the drawing board and started looking through some old projects for inspiration just to see if there's anything I'd like another crack at now that I'm a more experienced programmer and I remember this challenge game I made back in 2022 uh, in January. Uh, the challenge was to make a game in one hour but I was really enjoying the process and I ended up actually working on it for a week afterwards and polishing it up and I was quite proud of the final thing that I made. I made a video about the process of doing this at the time and it was a massive flop. I recently re-uploaded it hoping you know I've got more subscribers now maybe it'd find some new life and yeah, it flopped again. But when I came across this project again, I just, I realized it was still quite fun to play. And most importantly, the idea is very, very low scope. Um, it just needs more refining uh, to make it like a proper air quotes game. So I booted the project back up in Unity, made sure it was all working, then upgraded the engine version to the latest LTS that was there at the time. And then my first step was just reading through all the scripts that I'd made, um, because it was just a jam style game originally, the code was awful. But fortunately, there weren't many scripts to actually wrap my head around. It was quite a simple um, code base. I took my time reading through the code and I made a plan of what the first steps were to bring this up to scratch. The first thing was I had to rewrite some of the systems just to make them more expandable. Um, and I started this process on the 31st of March, which is when I connected up to version control. And you can see in the last two months, a lot has gone into the project, which currently sits at 69 commits. Nice. The game has come a long way since that one hour game jam, uh, but visually not a huge amount has changed and that's what I find really hard about developing for YouTube. Because I've been spending a lot of time on system creation, uh, not a lot of actual like graphics have changed so it doesn't visually look that much different. Uh, but now that's largely behind me, I can actually start to focus on content creation for the game. For example, I really want to start adding more enemy types in, which will be the subject of the next devlog. So what sort of systems have I been making in the last few months, I hear you ask? Well, we now have a more robust saving and loading system, which is a lot more extensible now. If there is anything else I need to save down the line, I can easily add that in. I'm also still debating whether I should encode this so it can't be so easily edited, but it's a single player game, so I'm bordering on who cares if they edit it, it's their own fun they're ruining. There's also a mutator system which I have designed in a way for it to eventually become moddable and I want to support the Steam Workshop for these mods. Mutators are scriptable objects that hold a variety of gameplay mode tweaks within them, uh, which if used can change the way the game feels and plays in a variety of ways. For example, we've got ones that slow everything down other than the player, one that reverses player's control so up comes down etc and another which increases the player's movement speed. 
My plan with this is for players to be able to make new ones using an in-game editor and upload these to the Steam Workshop for people to download into their game. Player ability system got a rework too. I made a base scriptable object script which defines what an ability actually is. For example, the recharge time, the cooldown, how long it is active for, and these can be of three tiers which correspond to the rings around the player, with tier one being simple abilities like a dash, and tier three being slower but more powerful ultimate style abilities. And I can actually use this ability system for stat increases as well, so um, more player health, just changing the move speed, kind of like permanent buffs that aren't tied to the abilities but kind of use that same system. And in the one week version of the game I did actually have a simple upgrade system in place, but this had to be rebuilt from the ground up to use this new ability system I'd made. Now, players can not only upgrade their starting abilities, making them more powerful, but they can also purchase and equip brand new abilities. My next step is to allow the enemies to use the ability system as well, which in an ideal world would mean any ability I make for an enemy to have, the player could have access to as well, because it uses the same systems. I also stripped out Unity's input system and added in an asset called Rewired, which I was recommended, and let me tell you, it's so awesome. Uh, so much easier to work with than either of Unity's input systems, the old one or the new one. And I mainly did this because I was getting frustrated at being able to, you know, be using keyboard and mouse and then pick up a controller and then everything just switch to uh, controller controls. But yeah, Rewired, amazing. Speaking of assets, I also added in Odin Inspector, which I've barely scratched the surface of yet but it lets me do stuff like add simple buttons to the inspector without needing to write my own editor code. If you like what you see so far, you can of course wishlist Red Velocity down in the description below. I currently have a full Trello board with bugs and features I need to work on before I can call the project complete, and I'll be adding to this as and when I need to, kind of as the development continues. If you've got any suggestions about what kind of you think the game could benefit from, let me know in the comments below. But for now, I probably should get back to working on the game, shouldn't I? 